Hi, I'm Eric Miller from the technical support team at Pepperell & Fuchs. Today I'm going to cover how to configure the new Series I.O. F77 ultrasonic sensor using the Pactware Wizard software. Then I'm going to do a short demonstration highlighting some of the main features of this ultrasonic sensor and the software. Here are the physical components we'll need for this demo. The Series I.O. F77 ultrasonic sensor, a V31 to V1 patch cord in the back, then a V1 to V1 extension cord connecting into the IO Link Master, and then the IO Link Master kit, which contains the IO Link Master, a power supply, and a micro USB to USB connector. To get started, we need to download the IO Link Connection Wizard and the DTM files for the sensor and the IO Link Master. These DTM files are the driver files that are necessary to communicate between the sensor and the computer. Locate the wizard and sensor DTM files on the Pepperell and Fuchs website by searching for the sensor in the search box. For example, I'll type in UC400-F77-IU-IO-V31, since that is the part number of the sensor that I have. Once on the sensor web page, click on the software tab. There, you'll see two zip files. One for the connection wizard, another for the F77 DTM files. Download both of them individually to your PC. It is important to note that the group of F77 DTM files is the same no matter what sensor page you download it from. Next, we need the IO Link DTM. Type in IO Link Master 02 USB to the search box on our website and then click the IO Link Master 02. A link to this web page has also been provided in the description box below. Then click on the Software tab and download the DTM similarly to the last two. Once powered up, the all-important first step needs to take place. In order to communicate with the computer, the analog version sensors need to be put into I.O. link mode. To do this, hold in the push button for five seconds. The green LED should now be flashing. One flash is rising ramp, two flashes is falling ramp, and three flashes is I.O. link mode. Toggle through using the push button until we have three flashes for I.O. link mode. Then hold the push button for two seconds to accept the teach. Anytime the power gets disconnected, the sensor will default back to rising ramp. If you're using a discrete version, then IO Link will connect automatically. Now, open up the Pepperell and Fuchs IO Link connection wizard from the desktop. The wizard will automatically connect to the IO Link master and the sensor. Double clicking the sensor after it connects will bring up the sensor information. In the sensor parameters panel, there are seven different tabs. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm only going to highlight a few of the unique application solvers. First, let's look under the output configuration tab. Here, with an analog sensor, you can select a rising or falling ramp and a current or voltage output. You can also enter the numeric near and far sensing limits in millimeters or click the determine icon and that will automatically determine the limits based on an actual target position. Next is the sensor configuration tab. Here you can select the beam width. By clicking on the advanced button it will give you the ability to set small, medium, and wide beam widths to different percentage levels. 
This allows for 10 different beam widths. Also in this window, there's a synchronization tab, which allows you to synchronize multiple sensors to avoid crosstalk and an echo loss tab, where you can set a defined output status if the sensor receives no echo pulse. The next tab is the analysis and echo suppression window. This feature is the main focus of the demonstration coming up. It allows you to isolate and suppress undesirable echoes received by the transducer, ignoring objects that you don't want to detect. In this tab, you can automatically suppress echoes or manually set up to 10 points to suppress. At the top of the window, you can select how many echoes to sample and how many of those samples are displayed in the graphic. The graphic shows the distance to all objects seen by the sensor and amplitude of received sound from each of those objects. We'll revisit this tab in a moment. Lastly, the Observation tab shows the distance from the sensor to the primary target in millimeters. The analog current or voltage value can be shown as well by selecting the Output Analog checkbox. Right now, the sensor is seeing the door handles at about 225 millimeters away. As you can see, the output can be sporadic based on the environment the sensor is in and also the reflective qualities of the target so slowing down the interval can give a more steady reading, as seen here. In this demonstration, the sensors mounted on the top of the cabinet assembly looking straight down. Out of the box, the sensor's output is activated due to the cabinet door handles. There's no way to know if it is seeing a target past the handles. Due to the new capabilities of this sensor, we are now able to suppress the sound reflections from the handle and anything else the sensor may be seeing with no target in sight. Let's take a look into the software to see what the sensor sees. In the Analysis and Echo Suppression tab, let's click 50 cycles and all samples to see the most prominent sound reflections the sensor receives. Click Start to begin receiving the data from the sensor. The three reflections it sees are from the door handle, the lip of the cabinet at the bottom, and the table. Using automatic echo suppression, let's suppress those three competing disturbances. If you'd like to change the size of one of the suppression areas, you can click on it and drag it to the size that you want. Let's go back to the sensor and cabinet setup to see how the sensor functions now. With those unwanted reflections eliminated, we can now get a continuous output from below the handles all the way up to the dead band of the sensor. This capability opens up a wide variety of new applications where an immovable object would have previously prohibited the use of an ultrasonic sensor. I hope this video familiarizes you with the new Pactor Wizard and helps you and your new Series I.O. ultrasonic sensor get up and running quickly. Any comments or questions can be left in the comment section below or feel free to contact our technical support group. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for our next video. Have a great day.